First, I want to make sure that you're fully awake because what I'm about to say is a bit scary. Imagine this nightmare scenario that I'm going to affectionately call an update from hell. 40 days before, an attacker compromises your update server, but you have no idea. The day of the attack, which is the eve of a major holiday, meaning that everybody in your IT team is at home, uh, the attacker releases an update of your software that has malware inside it. The very next day, computers from all over the world are found infected with this malware, and the tally of the damages runs to the millions of euros. A week after that, the government comes in with a, with a SWAT team, kicks down the doors, gets your servers. Uh, now everybody avoids you like the plague because you're that guy that broke the internet but, and cost everybody millions of euros and your business is dead. If you think that this is a Hollywood movie, well, it actually happened in uh, June 27, 2017. It's the story of the NotPetya malware. And this happened a month after I gave this presentation for the first time, so I can say I called it. You might say, but we're running antivirus on our system, so we're not affected, right? Well, about that. If it is an emerging threat like the NotPetya malware, your antivirus may not be able to detect it, especially if it's uh, a very advanced malware. Also, people trust signed code. So if you try to install something on Windows or Mac OS and says that it's signed by uh, a trusted developer, which supposedly has gone through some vetting process, then you say, okay, this is, this is good software. I can install it. It's not going to contain any malware, right? So what if I told you that you could have a legitimately, legitimately signed antivirus software that's full of malware? Because this actually happened uh, with Avast CCleaner, which is supposed to clean your computer from malware. Uh, between August 15th and September 12th, 2017, they were distributing malware. Uh, so I guess that the X-Files were right all along. Trust no one. So on having that in mind, let's see how Joomla updates work. I can tell you that there is no magic involved. Just a little bit of uh, asking around. First of all, your site... Uh, knows that there is a Joomla update server, so it goes to uh, uh, the update server and says, well, I want your list of all available Joomla versions. The server that replies through the internet says, okay, here's a list of all the versions, and here is also where to download them from. Uh, first of all, do you know what the internet is? It's not a series of pipes. Uh, only the Americans here understand that joke. So the internet is basically a network of other people's computers. Any computer in between can be compromised. So first of all, we have asked about a list of versions from someone else, right? And they are telling us where to download these files from. Now Joomla sees that list and says, ooh, there is a new version. Therefore, I'm out of date. I have to ask the user to, to install the update. And the user says, oh, well, Okay, there is a new version of Joomla, install. So what does the site do? It goes through the internet again and says, all right, fetch me that file that the update server claims contains the new version of Joomla. The file then is downloaded to your site. Now your site is like, great, let me overwrite myself with the contents of this file. Right, this is how updates work. This is Literally how updates have worked in all kinds of software ever. However, you think you got an update of Joomla, right? Sometimes the, um, it, it can be deceiving. You might expect to get a Lime 
and then you cut a lime and instead of a lime you are like is this an orange is this what what the hell is that by the way this is a calamansi uh, which is a completely different fruit but hey it disguised itself as a lime so who would have known the same thing can happen with updates therefore i have trust issues with your code points of failure where all that process could go wrong through someone else's computers. First of all, when we ask for a list of available versions, we do not check where that list comes from. It can come from anyone. It can come from Joomla, from me, from my cat. Nobody knows, nobody checks. That list also contains where to, to download um, the zip files with the new versions. When we download that code, we do not check where that code came from, right? I mean, think about it. It, it used to come from joomlacode.org and then it started coming from GitHub. Were you aware of that? No, because nobody told you and you had no way to check for yourself unless you're a developer. Um, so you could be downloading pretty much anything. But we're using HTTPS and everything is, is all right, right? Well, HTTPS is great if it works properly and it's set up properly. Joomla has many ways to download stuff from HTTPS. Now, it's, it's getting a little bit technical. Um, one of those uh, ways is uh, HTTP transport socket. That adapter does not verify SSL at all, so I can uh, have a completely broken SSL certificate that's out of date and for another site, and it will still work. It will still download the code and say everything's fine. So my professional opinion is that since this cannot be really fixed, you should remove it, or you should spend time to fix it. Uh, there is another adapter called um, uh, JHTTP Transport Stream, which does verify the um, uh, the SSL certificate, so it has to be a commercially signed SSL certificate. However, it doesn't care about the host name. So I can provide an SS, a valid SSL certificate for my malwaresite.com instead of joomla.org and the file will still be downloaded, which is bad. This, th this is worse than the previous one. The previous one just doesn't do any check, so yeah, it's obviously wrong. This one does a half check which is even worse. It gives you a false sense of security. Um, thankfully, most of the times these are not used. On most properly configured servers, you're using the uh, curl transport, which does proper SSL verification. However, that leaves us with at least 20% of all sites out there that are going to be using one of those broken stuff. And this means that they could be downloading malware without knowing it. Of course, SSL certificates are only good if they can be trusted. And they can only be trusted if they are signed by a commercial uh, certificate authority um, that you pay so that they will do some kind of identity <coughs> check on you and make sure that nobody tries to issue an SSL certificate in your name. And you would think that large corporations like Symantec wouldn't screw up, they do. Uh, then again, there are Chinese companies that you probably didn't know that they are Chinese, like Startcom. Anybody using an SSL certificate from Start SSL? Used, past tense, yes. Because they will sign anything for anybody if it's in China. So. The, the general certificate of start SSL didn't get revoked. The browser stopped trusting it because they were issuing certificates for everybody without checking. So it's very important to also choose an SSL certificate authority that actually knows what they're doing. Otherwise, <laughs> your SSL certificate is worthless. Um, there are a few possible attack vectors to infect a Joomla site with malware through updates, through core updates. 
first of all, it, uh, I'm going to start from the simple attacks, which are more plausible to the very far-fetched scenario that's more implausible. First of all, a, a user can be conned to use a malicious update zip file through phishing. Someone sends them an email, hi, we is Joomla.org and we have new version, download here. You would think that most people wouldn't fall for that. Not everybody is good at English. Not everybody understands that this is bad English. Not everybody understands that Joomla doesn't email you. You would be surprised. So it's very easy for people to fall for that. This has mostly been addressed in the current version of Joomla, actually since Joomla 3.6, um, by disabling the upload and install as extension of Joomla. And if someone really wants to do that, they have to enter their super user uh, username and password to let Joomla update install that. Uh, it's it's uh, it saying that uh, I had been talking about for many years and apparently uh, at some point Joomla decided that yeah, we should do it and they asked me to do it, there you go. However, that's not enough, that was the simplest scenario. There is also the case that there is a malicious update uh, update zip file in a spare phishing scenario where, where I target a specific user and I replace the zip file when it comes to their server just for this user. So it's a very targeted attack. I could, of course, if I was an advanced attacker, do DNS poisoning or and SSL spoofing, which means that I'm uh, now getting into the network layer and making someone's site believe that I am Joomla.org, even though I am not. This is an attack that's only possible if you have lots of resources, which means money or government. Uh, if you want to up the ante, there, you know that there are many services out there that do automatic updates for, uh, for Joomla and also hosts that also do the same thing. If one of them gets compromised and all the sites that rely on them get compromised. That's a really bad scenario, which is plausible and we hope this doesn't happen because these people know what they're doing. And then we have the attack scenario that's like, you pretty much need a government to do that. It's not the kind of attack that anyone else can pull off which is that you hack the actual servers that contain all the updates, which means you're hacking a CDN, you're hacking GitHub, you're hacking Amazon. Um, we consider this unlikely, but if it happens, then all Joomla sites are hosed. This issue is definitely not specific to Joomla. This doesn't mean that Joomla is bad. It means that all software in general doing updates is potentially bad unless someone spends a lot of time. WordPress has had similar uh, issues in the past. Actually, the issues that I described, they still have them. They also had another issue in the past where um, someone could do a commit in a GitHub repository and automatically trigger an update for WordPress that could install malware. They fixed that, that was, that was a scary one. But still, they do not verify updates just like Joomla, just like Drupal. Uh, so it's not like you move to another CMS and you're safe from that. Linux distributions 10 years ago used to have a, a similar issue because they used to sign the packages, the actual code that executes, but not the metadata. So you could point someone to download untrusted packages, therefore sidestepping the entire signature process. Uh, that was common in most distributions. It, it, it affected Deb, it af um, dpackage, which is the Debian um, package manager. It affected RPM, which is the other big package manager. It was bad, it was fixed. And as I said, Drupal has similar challenges, or, although they are much more organized because they have already laid out all the problems and how someone could exploit them. It's public information. Uh, but they're very thorough and they are very pragmatic, they still don't have a solution. Did I also mention the attack vector for NotPetya, the Emmy Dog business? Yeah, that was the business that's uh, pretty much shut down right now by the government. So it 
doesn't affect the CMSs, it affects all software. But since we're here on a Joomla day, we're talking about Joomla. How do we improve the integrity of updates? How do we protect Joomla users against malicious actors, against people who want to hack everybody? First of all, we should be doing cryptographic signing. What is cryptographic signing? It is based on public key cryptography, which sounds scary, but you're all using it right now because you're all using HTTPS, right? Have you connected to Facebook lately? Have you connected to Twitter, to Google itself? Then you have used crypto public key cryptography. This is the base of SSL. Uh, if we want to exchange information securely, I have a key, which is my private key that I only know, and I have a public key that I give to everybody. When I want to communicate with you, I encrypt something with my private key that I only have, and you get this garbled text, you apply my public key, and then you see the text. So this means that you know that this text came from me, but then again, everybody could do that. So how would I secure the text? I would, I would do a has then sign first to prove my identity, which means I take my text, I create a cryptographic hash, just like, just like Joomla takes the password of a user and creates this garbled text that's stored in the database, which is a one-way function. You cannot reverse it to get back the clear text. And then I would apply my, my, my private key and create this garbled crypto text. You would apply my public key and you would verify uh, you, you would get back a signature that you could uh, compare against the text I sent you, and now you're absolutely sure that this text came from me. If someone tries to add even a dot in that text, the signature changes and it's invalidated. So nobody can pretend that they sent something that didn't come from me. Uh, you should do that using an established and audited cryptographic library, so there are hopefully no known security holes that could be used by someone else to uh, pretend that, uh, to successfully pretend that the information came from us. How do you do that in PHP? How many of your developers here? Okay. Everybody else might, your eyes might glaze over, that's okay. This, this is where the uh, difficult stuff is in the presentation, but we just, minutes. So cryptography in PHP has many different options. I am not even going to talk about mcrypt because that's been dead for too long. Um, this is why Joomla is no longer using mcrypt. We made sure to, uh, to, to remove mcrypt by default last year, I think, with uh, Joomla 3.6. Um, so let's see what are the more secure options. For all versions of PHP from that are in current use from 5.3 to 7.1, you can either use RSA through OpenSSL or the Sodium library, which is modern cryptography, but this is only available on PHP 5.6 and later and requires an extra PHP extension that's not usually available in most sites. Um, PHP 7.2 is the first programming language ever that has modern cryptography built in by default using the Sodium library. So this is amazing. However, there are still sites using PHP 5.3 which went end of life so many years ago that I don't even want to talk about it. Anybody here using PHP 5.3? Do they, do, do they hold a gun to your head? Do they hold a gun to your head to use PHP 5.3? So they're going to get hacked anyway. Okay. Anybody using PHP 5.4? Okay, that's better. Anybody using PHP 7? Great. Yeah. So... 
all the versions of PHP 5 except 5.6 are already end of life. They're still being used. PHP, anybody using PHP 7.2 right now? It, it's still in, in RC. Okay, so you see, uh, PHP 7.2 will be widely deployed in like five to six years. So until then, you can't really use that amazing stuff. But it's okay. Um, because since we do not have cryptographic signatures right now, we don't need to care about backwards compatibility, which allows us to select the best option. Uh, for Joomla 4, you could use a library like EasyRSA, or we could see if we could use um, the Sodium Compat library if it's proven to be secure, that's currently included also in Joomla 3.8. But for the next major version of Joomla, which I reckon won't come for another three to four years, uh, meaning Joomla 5, we could very easily use a light which uses sodium. So there is a way to use modern secure cryptography in Joomla even right now and support most, most servers out there. Signing updates. What exactly are we signing and how? We have, first of all, to sign the update packages themselves so that we know that the code actually came from Joomla. How do you do that? Um, zip packages have an amazing feature which is called comments. You basically, at, at the end of the file, you add a special series of bytes that say everything following now is a comment. And that's the end of, of the zip file. This is your package. Now you take that package and you create a cryptographic signature and you can append it. At the end of the zip file, it's still a valid zip file. You can extract it and now it's also signed. Great, simple. So you, you can very easily use it. And this signature can be included both in the zip file and in the XML update stream. Therefore, you can make sure that nothing really gets changed during the transport in all those many steps that are required to do an update. And you also need to sign the metadata as Linux distributions have found out 10 years ago. Remember when I said that like five minutes ago? Yeah, we should be learning from other people's mistakes so we don't repeat them. What is metadata in Joomla? It's the XML update stream. When you ask for update, you get an XML file, which is a list of versions and where to download them. And this is your metadata. You should normalize them so there are no white space and stuff that can change the message. Create a hash of that, sign it, and this is your signature. And append it to the XML file itself, like an attribute in the, in the root element of the XML file. This is a solved problem for like 20 years now. And what happens in case any of the signatures does not match Joomla's public key? Basically, you need to sound <laughs> the alarm. So a big full page, red, bold, huge text, warning, compromised, and do not let the, the user continue unless they do something that really proves their identity, like entering their uh, super user username and password. You want to scare them because this is scary stuff. If, if, it's, if the signature is compromised, they are 99.9% .9 installing malware. So you want to tell them, stay away. You're about to do something stupid. How do you sign? Packages because, okay, yeah, right, you need to, to do signs. How do you sign? Uh, you need to have a so public key cryptography. You will need to have a master key from which all sign signing keys will be derived. That master key is literally the key to your kingdom. It must be offline at all times. It must never, ever, ever, ever live on the internet or touch a computer that might ever be connected to a network, ever. Because you cannot guarantee that someone hasn't hacked you. 
And not only should the master key be offline, not one person must have in his possession both the master key and its password. This is not as crazy as you might think. Um, you know the internet? You know how you type an address and suddenly a, a web page is rendered in your browser? There's some magic there because computers don't connect to addresses, they connect to IP addresses. So how do you transform that human readable address like facebook.com to the IP address where the server actually responds to? It's DNS. And DNS has some root servers. Those root servers are protected by very strong, very long keys. And there are seven people in the world with those keys, but they do not have the entire key. They only have a fragment of the key. And twice a year, they meet up, they sign the new keys, they break the keys again into seven different fragments, and then they fly off to different parts of the world, right? So, sounds a bit crazy, it's not. Uh, this, is, this is a great way to make sure that uh, nobody, no, no country can uh, just take a paramilitary squad, kidnap someone, put a gun in their head and tell them, okay, give us the master key to this software or you die. Because if you're faced with that decision, you will say, oh, okay, get, get the fucking key. I don't want to fucking die. So at all times, have the master key and the password separate. And I would say because if you only have one copy of the master key and one copy of the password, you have a bus factor of one. Do you know the term bus factor? It's how many people can be hit by a bus before your organization crumbles. So you should have multiple copies, but not one person should ever have both things that are required to, to sign packages. You do not sign with a master key, you sign with a signing key. The good thing about signing keys is that they can be stored securely in hardware where they cannot be extracted from unless you have a very high powered electron microscope and several months with uh, very specialized technicians of only it's just three or four countries in the world that can do that. Uh, probably Germany is one of them, five. Um, so you would store the signing key in a smart card that's protected with a password. How do you create these smart cards? Using a narrow gap secure computer. It's literally a chip network where you have installed Linux, and then you have put super glue in its network ports, and you have uh, physically cut off its uh, wireless network antennas. You cannot connect to the network with that stuff. That is where. And you only use it to create those smart cards. Remember that this computer will have the master key, and someone else who has the password will get that computer, enter the password, and then you sign the, the smart card and give it to the person who will be doing the releases. So this is great physical security. And you, yes, you have to be paranoid because what I described here ensures the security of millions of sites. Failure is not an option. If I did this presentation like three years ago, you might have already uh, called a mental, a mental institution and I would be taken off here with a straight jacket. But, I mean, have you seen the world in the last year and a half? Have you seen the kind of, that, of attacks that take place? Uh, this is probably not even paranoid enough. Uh, so, good thing to finally know that just because I'm paranoid, it doesn't mean that uh, everyone is not uh, out there to get me. <laughs> right? So, that was about the core updates. How do we also make sure that our code is not crap? Our code doesn't actively hurt our, our clients, our, our users. This is how do we protect Joomla against ourselves, the developers. First of all, is your code really, really working? 
By the way, five minutes before getting into the Zoom for the presentation, I found yet another gigabyte. The same, with RSS speeds, nobody caught it. Reality check, if you are a core contributor, your actions reflect on millions of sites. If you screw up, you don't screw up your site, you screw up everybody's site. The current commit, pro commit process means that anybody can commit any kind of code, no matter if it's a user interface or, or library, without anybody caring, it's always the same process. If you have two valid tests by two random people on the internet, then you commit it, aka YOLO CMS. You need to actually have code review by community developers who are experienced and understand how not just this one little bit of Joomla works, but how the entire thing is held together by string and duct tape. It's a good idea not to drive everybody away from community development because then you lose institutional knowledge. You need to have specifications and dedicated testers for new major features instead of having, having any random person say their personal opinion and letting the full contributor try to figure out what the hell is expected of them uh, because that's a major roadblock in implementing successful new features. You, you can never please everybody. If you try to please everybody, then what you are going to create is going to be unusable. And if you try to, to push hard on uh, a minimum viable product, you're going to be told that you are, uh, you have a conflict of interest or you don't know what you're doing or whatever, and then you just don't contribute ever again. And this is very important, be a realist. Try to test any code you commit with copies of real world sites on real world servers using real world extensions from major providers. Real world is the key. The bug that I found just before I started doing this presentation is that if you try to enable RSS feeds on Joomla and you have intro images in your, in your articles, the RSS feed is not invalid, right? It's a little blatant, but nobody caught it because apparently nobody used it with a real site that used intro images. Oh well, code attribution. It's very important to know who actually wrote what. Right now, in God we trust, if you believe in God. Attribution is extremely important, especially if you find that there, there is a security issue that was introduced by a very strange commit made by someone that you would normally trust, and you're like, what? Did someone kidnap you and force you to, to commit that, or what? Um, Always, always, always sign your commits with your GPG key. It's extremely easy to do. Uh, the instructions are, are there for everybody to follow because this is what for Linux kernel maintainers do. It's not necessary, but it's highly recommended to store your signing key in a smart card instead of having it in your computer because your computer might get compromised like you have a Windows computer and you use CCleaner, I need to tell you, you're already compromised, right? As I said in the beginning. And I am doing what I'm preaching. I am signing all of my commits since April 2017 using my GBG key. So when, wherever you see a commit from me, if it doesn't have, on, doesn't on GitHub have a tag next to it that says verified, do not trust it, didn't come from me. You, you also need to do some things to make sure that we know where each commit came from. First of all, you should add a reviewed by trailer line in the commit message. This is a core Git feature that very few people know. This is how you do attribution. Don't rely on GitHub history because GitHub is a company, it's a startup. If their financing runs out, they might stop offering free hosting for open source software or they might go bust and all that history that you have on GitHub is oh. At the bare minimum, you need to sign the release tags. Only uh, George, 
has ever done that. Uh, Robert thought that GitHour was doing that. It actually doesn't. Why is that important? Because if I try to get the code from a release tag from Joomla's Git repository, I have to be sure that what I'm downloading is the same thing as the zip package. If you don't sign release tags, someone can go there, delete the tag, make a commit, create a new tag, and what I'm downloading now has nothing to do with the with the code that's in the zip package. So not signing the tags make it easy for someone uh, who has uh, a grip on the release manager to uh, spread malware and nobody would be the wiser until it's way, way, way too late. Better, make sure that you also sign all the merges. If, if someone makes a pull request and you merge it, sign it. Take responsibility for your actions. Make, make sure that you say, hey, I, I am signing this, this code, I trust it. Because if you cannot do that, you shouldn't have commit rights in the repository. And the best thing you can do is sign every single commit, as I already said, because this makes sure that no code ever gets committed without being properly uh, attributed to someone. And if someone screws up, we know who it is, we know where he lives, and we can find them. And I'm going to also tell you how this applies to extensions updates, because so far I have only talked about core updates, Joomla itself. Um, where are we right now? Right now, the extension updates serve the same issues as the core updates. People can install chorus that have some nice prizes. And this issue is solved in, in the industry for decades now. This is something that Microsoft Windows, Mac OS X, and all Linux distributions have already done. You, you need to install a signed package, otherwise you need to verify that you know what you're doing. Um, you can have a very simple three-tiered three -tiered approach to installing software and updates on Joomla. Secure by default, just like all the operating systems require that what you're installing is signed. Uh, if you're a power user, you might want to be allowed to install untrusted extensions if you really, really, really want to and if you really, really, really verify that you want to. Or you're a developer, you're developing something, you cannot sign it yet, uh, you can install anything. This is not something that I thought of, this is something that is currently available on all major operating systems. I, I didn't invent the, the wheel. Uh, how do you assure the integrity of an extension package? you will need to sign it with a developer certificate that's uh, using the same way that Core would sign its own updates. Joomla needs to act as a certificate authority, which means that it must be able to issue certificates for uh, developers, and the proper authority to do that would be the JED, the Joomla Extensions Directory. Um, the e-signing process would also take place offline for the same reasons that I, uh, that I have already mentioned about core updates, uh, with a computer that is air gapped and physically handed over to a, a responsible person. And I would say that if JD is signing certificates for developers, they could require a small fee. You don't need to have a huge fee. Something like 50 euros a year would be just fine all commercial developers would be able to afford it. Um, and this means that JD has now some income, something that JD really needs because it's also our most important resource as the Joomla community and also the, the one resource that requires a lot of money to run, right? Because everybody goes to JD to find extensions. And when an extension provider provides updates, their signature must, of course, match the, uh, the canonical name in their certificate. So I cannot sign someone else's extensions, and that someone else cannot sign my extensions. It's, this sounds 
like um, I shouldn't even need to mention that, but it's a small detail that if you don't think about, can make all the difference. Um, very quickly, how you can assure the integrity of the extension updates themselves. The XML manifests are, are signed in the same way as the, as the core manifests. Um, in the root tag, we have two attributes, and that one is the publisher attribute, so my updates would have the Kiba limited, and the other one would be uh, the signature for the XML file. So now Joomla knows which certificate to pull and to how to verify the integrity of the metadata. Um, the XML manifest could also have a, an attribute that is stored in the database, so next time that someone is trying to pull those updates, if, if suddenly the updates come from a different developer, Joomla would be like, wait, whoa, these updates should not be coming from a different company. And this, um, the publisher attribute, who is authoring the extension, should be presented below the update. Because right now, when you go to uh, extensions, manage, update, you see a list of updates. Does the update for Akiba backup come from Akiba Limited? You assume so, but does it? Joomla doesn't say. It doesn't tell you where it came from. There are a few challenges with that scheme. Uh, the JD needs to act as certificate authority, which means that they need staff, and probably they need paid staff that only does this thing. The fee can cover that. Um, you should not deny issuing a certificate to a developer that you have banned for reasons that have nothing to do with the JD because that would land you in very hot legal water. For example, uh, if someone wrote something on a forum and you ban them from participating to Joomla, you cannot deny them or revoke their, their uh, extension certificate because in this case, they will sue you for uh, being denied the essential resource. Uh, are you allowed to collect personal information because you need to do that in order to act as a certificate authority? Are there any legal implications? You need to ask a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer and I'm not familiar with uh, US law and since OSM is incorporated in the New York, you should ask a New York lawyer. Um, how do you handle certificate revocation? Because someone might revoke their certificate if they believe it's compromised. It doesn't mean that they're naughty. So how do you handle that from a UX perspective? Um, what happens if someone's certificate expires but an old version of uh, of the extension is signed with that expired certificate. That extension is still valid. Microsoft is handling that by including a timestamp in the signature. So you know that at that point the certificate was valid. Um, if you do not do that, the code to handle this is much simpler, but people can no longer install old versions of extensions. And realistically, you shouldn't be you shouldn't do that because people have legitimate reasons to update old sites, like before upgrading them to a new Joomla version. Let's focus and do a small recap. Is all of that worth it? Because it sounds like a terrible amount of work, and frankly, it is. Security is not easy. There are two ways to do things, secure or easy. You can have five locks on your door, or you can have no door at all. Or you can try to find a happy medium. So, is all of that effort worth it? Well, you lead to less broken sites, less hacked sites, and it increases the client trust to Joomla as a product, which also means that Joomla now sells security as its unique selling point. Joomla, the CMS you can trust. Cryptographically. And of course, the most important reason, I think, for me, is social responsibility. We are responsible for our users. That's why we're all here doing open source development instead of working at a corporate office and making the same or even more money. And don't care, right? We're all here dealing with open source because we believe in people. So, 
my opinion, Joomla can and must do better. And the Joomla security strike team should take a stand and become proactive instead of being reactive. And we should, the, the JSSC, the, the security strike team should pre prevent. As soon as I mentioned the devil, Okay. The, the, in the security strike team, should make sure that uh, Joomla is a secure CMS by default and not just react when it's not. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Nicolas. I will be at the Akiba booth throughout this long uh, week. No, it's not, not long week. It's, it's two days. Um, you can download the presentation in, uh, in PDF format so you can follow all the links I have there. I have created some code examples about uh, the possibility of signing zip files. So uh, if you're a developer, you can understand what the heck I was on when I was writing that. I was on PHP code. Uh, by the way, you shouldn't say I am on PHP because PHP is also um, So if you have any questions, since my time is up, just come and find me at the booth. Uh, thank you very much.